May I speak in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We have been drawn into a time that is very different. A pandemic situation that has made a profound change to the world and to each of our lives. Our lives seem to have become virtual with an uncertainty that seems to have no end. During this lockdown, I was struck by one of the many news reports about anti-racism marches that have recently occurred. Even though the demonstrations became worldwide and held in every major city, this particular protest held a difference. It was a smaller demonstration held in Louisiana in the United States of America. The demonstration was about Black Lives Matter. The protesters were marching to the governor's office, many in heated chants, some for the death and for the justice for the life of George Floyd, many others chanting to live with an equal opportunity being black. Their placards were waving and their voices became more demanding. Then armed forces dressed in full battalion dress appeared from nowhere. The situation looked menacing. The military were wearing helmets, batons, and were protected by full body lens shields. They deemed to gain full control. But as they moved forward, they adopted a military maneuver called coning or kettling, the aim to round the protesters up and to stop them. Then something changed in the heights of all the tensions. A line of protesters, all white females, placed themselves between the military and the black members of the procession. They silently linked arms to form a protective human shield. On this fourth Sunday of Trinity, our reading is taken from St. Paul's letter to the Romans. In Paul's anguish, he is talking about his desire to do what is right, yet somehow never having the ability to get things quite right becoming a slave to his human nature, he knew it was wrong. And the last thing he wanted to do was to succumb to that which is wrong. No longer I, but the sin that dwells within me, indicating the awareness of the passions of the flesh that arise, knowing about them and hating the direction in which they take one. The point may be that once one is sold into a cultural system and that system leads to that way of life in habit, it encourages the force of the generation generalized actions in behavior, the generalized actions in worship. It seems to me that if one wants to change, it seems too great to overcome, to alter completely one's way of living for the new direction that is needed. Maybe we all know about this situation and it doesn't just relay to this historical period. Maybe it is something that is for everyone at this time. St. Paul gives the impression that every person was created with two natures, two tendencies, two impulses. Every person has a wrong living right inside of them. To the Hebrews at this time, doing good or evil was to them a matter of choice. It is a free will of every person whether they respond in the right way 
or the wrong way. As we contemplate this passage, we must place it in context of Paul's discussion about law and grace. God gave them the law to keep a person from, frail, from falling prey to the wrong choice, to sit, to contemplate, and to change. In this, we are given the choices for the changes in faith to change within. I could say that all we need to do is to learn the law as described within the Old Testament. And that should keep you safe in the times of temptation. But the grace within the New Testament is something that Paul highlights. I believe that songs of faith, scripture verses, and various studies in God's words that we have learned throughout our childhood and, the, and our grown lives can help us and guide us through the difficult periods that we encounter. However, that approach to learning with all the right words and all the right actions tell us that without a relationship with the living Christ, it will not stand up to sin and temptation. Paul says that every attempt to follow the letter of the law is bound to fail at some point. We can try as hard as we want to, but there comes a time when our own good intentions fail us. We cave into a temptation. We say, I can't help it. It's just a part of who I am. In our own strength, we are powerless against sin. I ask you to contemplate Psalms 139. That simply says, You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. For you created my inmost being. You knit me in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. In this reading, then Paul proclaims proclamation of victory. Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Jesus has fulfilled the law of God. He is the perfect lamb that was given as a guilt offering for you and my sins. All our pride, all our jealousy and our need for acceptance can be brought to Christ. Everything that hinders our relationship with God can be dealt with through the forgiveness and love of Christ. Everything that motivates us to choose sin over the will of God can be submitted to the will of Christ at the cross. We are invited to renew your life. You are invited to renew your life with God. Renew your life with your husband, your wife, your children, your parents, your brothers and your sisters, and even more so with our community within the church. Christ's grace is sufficient for all of us. Your lives 
are sufficient. Whilst I was reading, a Bible illustrator by the name of H.W. Beecher, he wrote, grace is necessary for human perfection. He continues and says, the nature of a seed is such that when it is thrown onto the ground, it unfolds itself without culture, without any exterior influence beyond the light, air and soil, to be just that thing which it was meant to be. Every flower comes to its own nature and through culture may make it larger and finer, but yet it expresses the radical idea involved in the seed being born into the world. It opens and develops itself to that which God meant manhood to be. Let us pray. Father, I give to you all that I am and pray all that you want me to be. Open our hearts and our minds so that we can do what you require us to do and hear what you require us to hear and to acclaim when the time is right. Teach us to be more attentive. Teach us to pay more attention to those who are unable to speak. We pay for grace on those unable to action. We thank you, Father, that through the grace of your Son, Jesus Christ, with open hearts and minds, we will all come to know that all lives matter. Amen.